Hey everybody, welcome to a new video on Mimo Boot R and some new functions that I've added this week. So what I've done is I've added two two-way moderation and prep for three-way moderation. Uh, additionally, next week or a couple weeks from now, we're going to be testing and making sure that categorical model six, that double mediation, and categorical versions of this model also work. So stay tuned for some more videos to make sure that categorical double serial mediation, model six, and double moderation, model two, work. <laughs> so right now, if you're trying to use categorical variables on those, it may just stay coming soon mostly because I'm just still trying to work out all the kinks. Okay. And so I'll just do a quick models visualization here. And I don't know how much people use this specific model, but it's a good prep for model where you have a three-way interaction because the follow-up for it is basically the same. So what we've got is X predicting Y, and then we have one moderator, so x times m that predicts y, and then a second moderator where x times m2 predicts y. But what we're not doing is x times m1 times m2. That'll be um, three-way moderation coming soon. We're also going to add a covariate just so that you can always see how we either do this with categorical variables or co covariates involved. Now I'm going to hijack my example from last week and actually do the exact same thing, but now as moderation instead of mediation. So what grade would you get in the course? Are the exams a fair representation? Of, are the exams fair? Are the grades fair overall? And is this a course I wanted to take as my covariate? So what I think happens is that I'm adjust for the fact that students often don't want to take statistics. Um, and then I'm going to see what happens to X. So what happens between grades and overall course evaluation, which is what Y is? So I really don't want the grade in the course to predict why, but it does. Um, because I would like that the course, you know, the instruction and the, the course itself tells me what kind of course it is. Not they made an A so they like the course, they made a D so they hate the course, right? And I think that there's some sort of interaction between um, the exam grades and the grade fairness predicting that changes this relationship. So last week we did mediates this relationship. This week we're doing changes this relationship. So there's some sort of like if they're making a low grade and the exam, they don't think the exams are fair, they rate this really lowly, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, what we're going to do though is work on how to run that. So I'm going to go over to R tell you how to do it. Make this a little bigger. So what you want to do is download this mediation to data set, which I know we're doing moderation, but it's the same data set from that we used last week. Oops. Set my working directory here and load the data set. So the data set has a bunch of observations and it's just basically everybody's course uh, evaluations with 15 questions, but we're only going to use a couple of them. And then what I want to do is run, if you need to, if you have never installed uh, Mimo Boot R, you need to do DevTools first and then install it from here. If you are keeping up with me every week, uh, you will have to reinstall it every week uh, to get the updates. So anytime I put out a video, um, I've usually pushed some new updates and you do have to, it doesn't automatically update. So just use this one line and it will update your package. Sometimes R will give you this little like, a grumpy thing about the um, help pages, but what the fix for that is just to close R Studio and open it again, and um, suddenly they're fine. So if you get any of those error messages, or if the whole thing breaks for you, please let me know. I've already reinstalled it, so we're gonna load the library. And just a quick reminder of the cool things that Studio has. You can click here, you can learn a little bit more about the version we're on. So we're actually going to be on version 6, I need to update that. You can look at all of the functions here. So dual two-way moderation, another typo to fix. <laughs> um, but it explains what's going on and then it tells you what each piece needs to be. So if you were trying to do this without having to rewatch the video, you can see um, what all the pieces are. 
And then as I get this prepared to like actually move into a real package, the examples will be more fleshed out with, um, with this information on what you need to do to see everything. Okay, so it's kind of mapping it, the videos onto the examples. Just kind of a reminder of where you can find more help. So to run moderation two, it looks very similar to mediation two. I have a Y, an X, an M1, and an M2. Any covariates I'm interested in. Uh, what data set or data frame this is in, which I've just called master, with or without outliers. This week we're doing without outliers. Okay. So we're gonna run all that. Well, wait a minute. It runs much faster than mediation because we're not bootstrapping anything. And then let's walk through all the parts and pieces that this gives you. Okay. This does save as a large list, depending on how big your data set is, because it, I'm giving you all the pieces back. So um, when you run any one of the functions in this package, it uh, allows you to have basically everything I've done in the background back so that you can pull it separately depending on your reporting style. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna kind of figure out what the heck I did for outliers so I can view the full data set. This gives me the entire original data set back and I can also look at total outliers this excluded anyone who had two or more out, uh, outlier mentions. So this is Mahalanobis, Leverage, Cooks. I have some videos on data screening if you need to learn more about those. And this, basically what it did was excluded anyone with two or more. So that final data set is going to be uh, the sum of saved data screening full data. Uh, one more dollar sign. Let's see how many we can get in here. Uh, total out greater than or equal to two. Hit the wrong button. There we go. So it excluded 165 participants for having uh, two or more outlier problems. If I wanted to include them, I could just change this to true, rerun the whole thing. Okay. Now I can look at multicollinearity, and these are. Um, these steps here are based on what you did with the outliers. So these run based on excluding or including outliers. So what I want to do here, let me run this again just so it can be a little more readable, is I just want to look for anything that has a very high correlation. So obviously between the interaction, those are going to be very high because question third point, you know, three one, it is composed of this interaction. Um, so that'll be solved by centering the data, which we haven't done yet uh, in this step. But mainly I'm just kind of interested in the main four and making sure that those aren't too high. So question three one and question four one have a very high correlation. Um, when we're getting into suppression range here, so that might cause me some issues. Um, but we'll just kind of wait and see. Okay. Let's look at linearity here. So this is a QQ plot of the residuals. It's looking pretty good. Most of the dots are on the line. Normality, you want it to be centered over zero, mostly between even on each side. Also pretty good. Maybe a little bit of um, negative skew over here. This graph's going to be hideous. Right? <laughs> I love that it looks like a, like a shooting rocket. <laughs> Right, that's not a good sign though. So it ranges from four to four this way and four to two here this way. So we have a little bit of problems with homogeneity because the dots are not equally spread in each quadrant um, around zero. And then we do have some problems with heterogeneity as well, although less so because the dots are more kind of a big blob. So what you're looking for is that you want a big blob of dots that's evenly spread around zero. Not so evenly spread around zero this way and a little bit of or heteroscedasticity. I have a very large sample size, so hopefully this will be rust to, robust to those violations. And if you're wanting to do some um, weighted least squares options, sorry, I haven't figured that out yet, how to put that in, but make an issue on GitHub and we'll figure it out together. Right. So to, to look at this, there's sort of, um, there are nine models that this creates. But you want to start by looking at the overall model, the sort of your average model of like where you would start if you were running this analysis. Okay. 
So what that is, is it says average M1, average M2. This is like the overall model. And now I can just see how this came out. So this model is the overall model that you would run to determine if you even wanted to do simple slopes. So what we would do is we could just look at each predictor here. So question 15 does not actually predict um, Y as a main effect. So question 15 is rise of the gray course grade does not predict overall evaluation. And then we could write that up. So we would put in the predictor. So B equals 0 0.004, or I could say less than 0.01. I do T, my degrees of freedom is the um, second DF or the GF residual here, or here, same one. Okay, equals 0 0.025, P equals 0.805. And we could keep going and to report each one of these one at a time. But just to save us time and brain power, we're just gonna, that's how you write them up. And we'll talk about the other ones more informally. So exam fairness does predict overall eval and pretty, pretty strongly. So if you think the exams are fair, you think the course is good. Overall grade fairness does predict that overall eval. So if you think the grading system is fair, you also think the course is good. We have a covariate or an adjuster, kind of depending on your favorite language there. And that one is, um, this is a course I wanted to take. Also positively predicts um, overall eval. So if you want to take the course, you think the course is good. If you don't want to take the course, you tend to rate it lower. Now we can write up these two B values for our interaction, just like we write up every other B value. The problem is that that's really difficult to interpret. So, I mean, I could write them up. So I could say interaction one, uh, so the interaction of course grade and exam fairness, B is negative 0.10. T is 3750, it's negative 1.84, P equals 0 0.07, 0 0.066, okay, and that one would be not significant. And then I could also do that same thing for the second interaction, but it's really um, difficult to know what those things even mean. So I would say this one is significant, okay? And you'll notice these are both right on the quote unquote line, right? So they're both on that P less than 0.05 kind of cutoff line. So that's a good sign that these are probably pretty small effects, right? Our overall model, R squared, is 0.66. So overall, this is a pretty big model but mm, these two predictors here, maybe not so good. One person did put in a suggestion that we talk about the addition of R squared here. I have that as a issue to add to all of my moderation models, have not gotten there yet. So at some point in the near future, these will also tell you the addition of R squared for the interactions. I also could write up the overall model, overall, overall, overall model, the F statistics. So I would do six and three, five seven zero equals right so six right? and this just gives me one big like giant number and so i'd probably have to dig into this model a little bit more to get the my more precise number here so um, we'd have to pull just that model out and like tell it to give us more of that information so we'd say um P equals or less than 0 0.001, and then we do R squared equals 0.659. So that just tells me that all six predictors are significant. 
So this is how we will kind of pull the overall model. If you want to follow that up, so no matter what happens, you will get these simple slopes because it's just, I want it to be a one-stop shop and just spit the data out for you. That does not mean that if the interaction is not significant, you should keep going. So um, this have, people ask me the same questions about process models because it automatically gives you um, that interaction if the p-value is less than some number you set. My models give you that interaction no matter what. And mainly that's just so that you will, can get all of these numbers. That does not mean that these numbers are all important. Right? So you want to make sure that you're interpreting things when you should. So if you set your alpha criterion at 0.01, none of these interactions would be significant and you would stop. But in, uh, to show you now how to get the other numbers if you're interested in them, there are actually nine saved models at the combinations of low, average, and high for M1 and M2. So as you start typing, just you can see all of the different combinations here. So the pattern of them goes low M1, low M2, right? Low M1, average M2, and low M1, high M2. So you can find all nine combinations. And you can start pulling the models and looking at the predictors. Mainly you're just gonna be interested in X right, and what happens to x as you go along. Um, and so you could do that for low, average, and high and do all nine on your own. Or you can view a saved um, a little data frame that has all nine of them together. Okay, no t values, no p values, but it at least shows you what's happening. And then you can know if you're pulling the numbers you should be looking for. So when we work with simple slopes, Essentially what we're doing is we're moving the data around to see what's happening at a specific range of the variable. This does not create um, subset of data that has just people who rated the course low. So it's not like we partitioned the data into nine little components here. What we did was we moved the pieces around to show you what happens at each one of these kind of combinations. So what I can see here is that at low um, exam fairness and low grading fairness, so this is the students that hate the exams and they hate the way it's graded, this value right here is X predicting Y. So this is the combination of these two interactive variables, what's happening at X. And so I said this is a good prep for three-way interactions. This is how you interpret three-way interactions as well. So we didn't do the three-way interaction here, but the easiest way to run a follow-up test is to sort of calculate all these different combinations. So um, because they're each interacting with X, okay? And this is the same outfit that process gives you as well. Um, if you were only interested in holding one of the variables average, you could look at the average here. So a low, medium, and high for just at average Q3, and you could look at averages going down for just this column. So if you wanted to only look at one or only look at the other interaction at a time, you would look at the average columns. So I might consider, since Q3 was not significant, I might consider only looking at what happens um, at low, average, and high Q4 when Q3 is, is average. But I really wanted to just show you, like, you can get all the T values and your standard errors and your Bs by running each little model one at a time and just viewing them um, or using like the coefficients functions. What this does is it just puts all of them together at once. So you know that you're looking at the right numbers and you can also see what's happening. So what the heck is happening? So at low exam fairness, so we're just gonna go across. You can go across or down to interpret these. Okay. When students don't think the exams are fair, what we see is an increasing amount of overall grading system fairness. So they don't think the exams are fair, but at increasing levels of grading fairness, the course grade predicts Y more strongly. So when the uh, grading fairness increases, the prediction between course uh, grade and um, overall evaluation increases as well. And that's actually true for all three levels of 
exam fairness. So there's probably not a three-way interaction here. It's because they're all increasing as I go across here. Okay. Correspondingly, they're all decreasing as we go down. So if they don't think the grading system is fair, they hate the way you grade the course, everything about grades is sucky. What happens is, if they think the exams are graded fairly, the, the relationship between course grade and evaluation actually flips and becomes negative, or just becomes zero. So it goes from high to low. Um, so what's interesting here is it kind of depends on how you want to tell the story, right? Um, I might talk about the exam grades. So exams are a critical important component of class. And so if they don't think, I would talk about this group here. They don't think the grades are fair. What happens to X when they think the course grading is fair? Well, now overall course, uh, your course grade predicts Y, which makes sense. You hate the exams, but at least the courses are graded fair. So I'm making an A, so this course is good. Um, if I don't hate the exams and sort of neutral on them, it's the same pattern, but it's not as strong. Okay. If I think the exams are fair, it's kind of like increasing levels of the course grading um, goes from being negative to nothing. Um, so this is how I can interpret kind of what's going on. So if you can just remember here that each number is x predicting y at the spot of the data, meaning at that that area, area is a better word. Um, I don't wanna say level because we're not talking about levels. Okay. Now, I did create graphs for you, so it's gonna split those graphs by M1. If you want the graphs to be split by M2, just switch M1 and M2 in your analysis, and it will create you a little graph, very slowly. Okay, I made the dots on this semi-transparent because um, it does get a little hard to read the more dots you have. But this is the relationship between overall course grade uh, predicting final course evaluation. And you can see like there's a kind of nice positive trend here, but the simple slopes here are pretty flat. Okay. So um, this is, does not include any uh, covariating out question 12. Like these dots are the real people here. And this is the slope for x to y and that intercept from the model. So this is not um, a predicted score, pre uh, like this is not their the score you would have guessed. This is just what they picked on question 15. Okay. This is centered because this is a moderation analysis. So your overall prediction is much better for this, but for this particular variable combination, this prediction is not very good. Okay. Uh, and so you can see the small fan effect you get. So this is if they hate the core, the grading for the exams. The average feelings about grades for the exams, the numbers are pretty flat, right? So I think the, the, the intercept moved up a little bit. And then this is when they think the grade, the exams are fair. Right? And so you actually get the reverse pattern where the, the low group is negative and it comes up to even. Okay? So you have to pay attention to the um, legend here. But it does create the graphs for you. So all that's where everything is hidden in the background for this. Like I said, there are like, you know, six more of these that you can pull each number so you can make a table of all your coefficients. Uh, let's end with power here. So let's say I want to calculate power for this. And I think that overall, um, I expect maybe a 0.07 effect. Okay, I know it's 0.66 because I just ran the analysis, but I'm doing this before I started and I don't know, I'm taking a guess. Okay. What I want to do down here is put in the degrees of freedom model. So how many predictors do I have? Well, I have um, X1, or I'm sorry, just X, M1, M2, CV1, and then I have X times M1 and X times M2. Notice that we don't have x times m1 times m2. That would be three-way interactions. So k, uh, or the number of predictors here is actually six. So I'm gonna change that to six. Leave v as null, because that's what we're looking for. If f squared was Cohen's f squared that we converted from regular r squared up here. 
Um, SIG is 0.05, power is 0.8, so you should justify your choices there. Tells me I need, okay, I don't need that plot. Here we go. Um, you add U and V, so I need 186 people. Okay. I could test the addition of the interaction. And so in that case, it's actually X times M1 plus X times M2. So it's actually two here. Now we could test each interaction separately, but let's say we're adding both of these interactions because that's what we're interested in. And we expect maybe that that interaction is only 0.03. Okay, rerun this. So now I need 311 plus 2, 313 or 14 to find a very small interactive effect. And so that's how I could test if uh, overall model prediction, so this um, with all the predictors, or I could test just the addition of the interaction um, where I was only adding X times M1 and X times M2. Okay. So I hope you're enjoying the package and following along with all of these mediation and moderation videos. I am almost over it. <laughs> Next week, we're gonna be working on making sure that the categorical prediction for our mediation two function and moderation two function work. And so we'll do a categorical set of videos for those just so you can see how they look and uh, how to interpret them. And then stay tuned. You can watch the SPSS one. It is now posted and stay tuned for more. Always feel free to go over to GitHub and ask questions or um, suggest things that you would like to see.